Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Hi, folks. Welcome back. And those of you that are new, welcome. More from the Twitter files. This video is going to be a little bit longer than normal, but I think there's a lot of information in here you need to know. Before we get into the story, everybody check their subscription status. Uh, people have been notifying me. They've been getting unsubscribed. And as well, their notification bell uh, was on all, so they get all my notifications from my videos, and that was changed or turned off. Now, I'm not making any accusations. I'm just telling you what happened. We can blame who we can blame. Also, if you're thinking about subscribing and you may think my work and my videos is good enough, please subscribe. Let's get right to it. From the Twitter files, Elon Musk slams CISA censorship network as propaganda. This DHS, Department of Homeland Security, Beck Censorship Consortium, used 120 analysts to censor millions of social media posts on elections and COVID-19. That's pretty crazy. Let's read on. Department of Homeland Security outsourced censorship to the Election Integrity Partnership. And they list all the things there. And here's the major stakeholders in government. And they're all quasi-government agencies funded by, you guessed it, taxpayers. Now, here's the civil society, me and private. ARP, NAACP. I'm 66. It's NAA, or excuse me, the ARP sends me things all the time. Common cause. All these so-called think tanks. And look at the platforms. Facebook, Twitter, Google, TikTok. Pinterest, you name it, all colluded to hide information. On the 2020 election, 120 analysts monitored 15 tech platforms. 22 million tweets were labeled misinformation. Entire misinformation narratives target for platform, platform wide throttling. The EIP claimed every repeat spreader of election misinformation was on the right. And here's, and there it is there. Isn't that interesting? We recognize some of these names. Real James Woods, Gateway Pundit, Donald Trump Jr., President Trump, Jack Posobiec, Eric Trump, and he goes through the list, Charlie Kirk, James O'Keefe, uh, Breitbart News. Uh, he goes on and on. Look on the uh, bottom there. Retweets and accidents, followers. Incidents all on the right. Isn't that fascinating? This Orwellian Speech Control Network also flagged pop, popular populist right YouTube channels, including Stephen Crowder, Blaze TV, Judicial Watch, and even the GOP war room as mis- and disinformation spreaders. Look at their all right-leaning channels and videos. All of them. The FFO Freedom Report comprehensively details the U.S. government's role in outsourcing censorship to this pr public-private network. Yeah, it's public money, and it's private people putting in their pocket. The founder extensively documented the individuals involved in the flow of taxpayer funds, $40 million to the domestic censorship. $40 million. It's incredible. Department of Homeland Security quietly corrupted CISA's mission when it designated domestic information as cyber attacks on critical cog cognitive infrastructure. Now, let's, let's listen to this. This ought to be fascinating. What the Russians have done is weaponized uh, social media. The issue is not just the Russians, but frankly, d domestic disinformation. How do you think that they've weaponized social media? Literally using it to manipulate public opinion, to put stories out that are biased or phony in order to drive public opinion a certain way. Probably more domestic generation of disinformation content that's occurring than foreign. Frankly, I think in, in 2016, it wasn't that clear that the Russian efforts in terms of... Oh, but he's just said it was Russian efforts. Now he says it's unclear. Oh, but CISA had a First Amendment problem. The U.S. government cannot sandblast millions of voters off the Internet because of their speech about elections. 
CSIA needed private sector partners to do their dirty work. And they got them by the ton. CISA lacked the funding and the legal authorizations to do grand scale censorship and get away with it. So CISA partnered with EIP. He'll fill the gap for the things the government could not do themselves. When government partners with media, the gatekeepers of information to the citizens of the country were discussing, in this case, the United States and beyond, that is authoritarian rule. I know it's going to be a little bit longer video, but just bear with me. There's a lot here. So who are these unelected bureaucrats who get to play jury, judge, and executioner and control the thoughts of millions of Americans? Yeah. But there's this moron. Chris Krebs' political bias and his affinity for domestic censorship. This guy called President Trump a national security threat. He was pleased that the Hunter Biden laptop was uh, censored. Passionately censored COVID-19 in elections. Wanted lawyers and doctors disbarred. Wanted conservative media bankrupted. Uh, let's, let's listen to this metal pygmy piece of garbage the dirty dozen or whatever they're calling it. Some of those have been uh, deplatformed. But the problem is, particularly for vaccine disinformation, it is metastasized. And it is now, you mentioned it earlier about the top down and the bottom up, the grassroots piece. It is now so pervasive that it exists just naturally within the ecosystem on Facebook and elsewhere. And that's where we need the platform to be more transparent in how their algorithms work, how engagement works, so that outside security experts and researchers can dig in. More transparent. More transparent on things that we want on there and our ideology and our points of view and our political bias. There's another piece of crap. Alex Stamos, a former Facebook exec. There's a shocker. He's the founder of EIP Censorship Network and Krebs Business Partner. This is this moron's partner. Stamos is a member of the CFR, a member of the Aspen Institute and director of Stanford Internet Observatory. They've got great names, these guys. And he loves censoring his opponents. Now, let's listen to uh, what he has to say. He, he compared over half of the Republicans in Congress to ISIS. He compared them to ISIS. He called them Verizon, AT&T, and Comcast to block OANN and Newsmax and said, we have to turn down the capacity of these conservative influencers to reach these huge audiences. un freaking believable of course, there's Brian Stelter now unemployed. Well, let's hear what this moron has to say. Now we're talking about domestic audience in the United States. And the challenge is going to be partially that you know, ISIS did not have a domestic constituency in the United States Congress. But there is over half of the Republicans in Congress voted to overturn the election. Um, and there will be a continual political pressure on the, yeah. the companies to not take it seriously. So I think first, you mm. have to focus on those violent extremists and those companies have to be brave in that way. And second, we have- mm, Ryan Stoltz said, mm, there's the real problem. Folks, your tax dollars are paying for this. And I'm gonna say this again. Every single person that voted for a Democrat at what level of government from your city council member to dog catcher all the way through president, this is what you voted for. It's incredible. Here's another piece of garbage. Kate Starbird is the head of the University of Washington Center for Informed Public Director and CISA's Disinformation. And here's the thing. Who gets to decide if it's disinformation? U.S. government grants have funded her work since 2013. That's almost 10 years. She's making 200 grand plus a year. I can guarantee it. Plus probably health insurance and God knows what other bennies. All with taxpayer dollars to screw you over. Isn't that fascinating? It's It's incredible. Here is the Cybersecurity Advisory Committee, a.k.a. the Bureau of Censorship. And if you see on the left-hand side, highlighted in yellow, Bahaji Agadi. You remember, she was the head legal counsel for, wait for it, Twitter. Yeah. Now, this piece of garbage. Graham Brookie is the figure who led the Atlantic Council's Digital Forensic Research Lab. <laughs> Love these names and a previous Obama White House National Security Council member. This guy was on the NSC, 
The Atlantic Council is a NATO think tank with seven living CIA directors as members. Seven. This is what this piece of garbage had to say. Look at this. A government-funded disinformation expert dedicated much of his time during President Trump's years in the White House to promoting the false narrative that the President of the United States was a Russian agent controlled by Putin. This, this is the same guy here. National Security Council. Putin is a spy working as source, meaning Donald Trump. We elected someone vulnerable enough to be used and worked over. The analysis is not hard here. Trump is dismissive and combative in private calls with allies, but he treats Putin as a confidant. <laughs> Unbelievable. The Russian president complains about fake news, and he goes on and on. He just loved Putin, but he hated his own allies. He also called the Hunter Biden laptop laundered, unverified misinfo. When DNI John Radcliffe said the laptop was legitimate, Brook, Brookie publicly condemned Radcliffe's credibility and accused him of politicizing intel. But the deflection has the Democrats and the progressives and the anti American Republic people have taken the word deflection and turned it into an art form. Incredibly, the Atlantic Council's disinfo lab, tasked by the DHS to censor 2020 election, tweeted its director's disdain for the president's days before the election. Uh, let's check out some other stuff. Another Facebook exec led the censorship role at Grappica and is a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council's DFR lab. He was a NATO press officer. Yeah, the ones that Trump argues with. Okay. Donald Trump is right that someone is trying to rig the U.S. election, but that is not Hillary Clinton. It's the Kremlin. Trump is accomplice, whether he realizes it or not. The Pentagon awarded this moron $5 million in 2021 for more censorship. And here's a opinion piece from CNN, the most trusted name in news. From November 2016. Now here's something really interesting. In effect, the left was allowed to discuss the vulnerabilities of voting machines after the 2016 election, the one where the Democrats lost the White House. And the right was banned from social media platforms discussing those very same vulnerabilities after the 2020 election. Now let's, uh, let's take a hear at some of these that were said in not too distant past. Virginia just stopped using touchscreen computer voting because it's so vulnerable. Right. We need to look at all the voting machines. Every secretary of state needs to be, you know, assisted in making sure that they are not being uh, hacked and, and attacked. I continue to think that our voting machines are too vulnerable. Our researchers have repeatedly de demonstrated that ballot recording machines and other voting systems are susceptible to tempering. Even hackers with limited prior knowledge, tools, and resources are able to breach voting machines in a matter of minutes. In 2018, electronic voting machines in Georgia and Texas deleted votes for certain candidates or switched votes from one candidate to another. The biggest seller of voting machines is doing something that violates Cybersecurity 101, directing that you install remote access software, which would make a machine like that, you know, a magnet for fraudsters and hackers. These voting machines can be hacked quite easily. You could easily hack into them. It makes it seem like all these states are doing different things, but in fact, three companies are controlling this. It is the individual voting machines that some pose, that pose some of the greatest risk. There are a lot of states that are dealing with antiquated machines right, which are vulnerable to being hacked. Workers were able to easily hack into an electronic voting. I think you get the idea, but the part they're not telling you is that every one of these mental pygmies and scumbag liars are Democrats. Isn't that interesting? EIP collaborated with big tech partners systematically censor NED, legitimization of vote by mail is disinformation, which you just saw. What you just saw. It's incredible to me. The political establishment of the left used the COVID-19 crisis to push for nationwide mail-in voting, which increased the number of ballots cast by mail from 28.8 million in 2016 to 66.4 million, 131 percent increase 
Look at this. The percent of Democrats voting my bill rose to 26%. In short, the extra 37 million ballots cast by mail during the 2020 election swung the election to EIP's preferred candidate. Look at that graph. Look at the look at the blue. Look at that. How the Democrats even, excuse me, Republicans even took over the House is a mystery to me with that graphic. Well, let's take a look at the progressives' friends in Europe. They say they're so far ahead of us in democracy and progressivism. Let's take a look how they do their voting. 74% of nations ban mail-in ballots for citizens living inside their country. Brazil, Russia, Israel, Mexico, and a host of additional developed nations have also banned voting due to security concerns. In 2012, the New York Times, this is the New York Times, wrote, all the evidence of stolen elections involved absentee ballots. Did this website, Twitter, and other things say that was misinformation? In 2016, the year that President Trump won, Slate wrote, the only voting fraud schemes, the potential to actually swing elections involve mail-in ballots. Why Republicans aren't actually interested in stopping, they have to talk about mail-in ballots. And that's just the way it is. It's incredible to me. I love this. Anyone that had a hand in censorship when it came to the election and COVID-19 need to be removed from their position. Clearance taken, pension taken. I agree. So there it is, folks. Taxpayer-funded censorship. Now, the government couldn't do it on their own, as we've seen in other Twitter files. When the FBI, the CIA, the DHS all worked hand-in-hand, put tons of employees, dozens of former FBI agents in Twitter and other social media companies they couldn't do it directly. So what they did was they did it indirectly with former intelligence personnel now working for social media companies. And then they give these outside grants hundreds of millions of dollars to two morons like these two to help censor content on social media and call it saving democracy and weeding out misinformation. So indirectly, the taxpayers paid for it, directly through the FBI and other intelligence agencies, and now with these so-called private companies, public-private companies. In other words, we'll give you hundreds of millions of dollars in grants and maybe some public matching. I'd love to see who that is giving them as far as private donations go. So that way they can say, wasn't us. We just gave them the grant money knowing exactly what they were going to do. This is so dangerous, folks, I can't even begin to tell you. And if the roles were reversed, and it was Republicans doing this to Democrats, I'd be just as mad and just as anxious and afraid. This is huge, folks. And we're going to see. We're going to see if the pressure on Kevin McCarthy and his speakership, if he gets it, from the new Republicans in the House of Representatives is going to make these hearings a bloodbath or just a show for entertainment, like the January 6th committee. We're going to have to see. But here's the thing. Find out, especially in Congress, and your state representative as well, but especially in Congress, who voted for giving grant money to these individual organizations to censor you, in your opinion, and call their offices. They're easy to figure out the phone numbers of your congressional representative, but either be the Senate or the House, and say, especially if you're a Democrat, call a Democratic congressman and senator and say, I've been voting Democrat my whole life. I understand you voted for a bill that gave grant money. We'll say these two morons to censor people on social media. I will never vote for you again. And I will make sure that I convince 10 of my Democrat friends not to vote for you. And I'll try to have them, 
Each tell 10 people. You'll get their attention in a hurry. You're not powerless. You have more power than you think. Until the next time, goodbye and good luck.